In this first chapter of the tutorial, we will take an overview of FMI different options and functions. This would be useful because when we'll take a look at certain parts of the synth, we will have a better understanding of how one thing interacts with the others. Some of the options are also accessible from different views, so it's worth to check what is where first. In this video, I'm using FMI version 1.1.1, which is a version using the previous file format KSD format for sounds. Many people still use this sound file format, but in the next videos I will be using the newest version and we will take a look at converting the sounds to the newest NFM8 file format then. So let's start from the top. We can see that two buttons here. The upper one is responsible for the edit view. When we click on it, this part disappears. The keyboard button works just the same way. Let's check the file menu. We can start making a new sound here. We can open an already done sound. We can save a sound that we are working on. And we can save sound as, so with a different name. We can import sysx data. So if we have sounds from DX7 synth, we can import them here. We can also import sounds from FM7 synth, which was the predecessor of FM8, if we have such sounds. Let's see the options menu. We have velocity options here. The DX7 had the velocity range from 0 to 100, so checking this box might be useful if you're using DX7 to control the FM8. As for MIDI controller range, some of the parameters in FM8 range from 0 to 100, like the volume setting here. So it might be advantageous to check this box when using a keyboard to control these parameters. When you set the controller on your keyboard to more than 100, it will just stick to 100. As for parameters with on and on switch, the controller range can be either 0 to 63 for OFF and higher for ON, or even numbers for OFF and odd numbers for ON, depending on the way your controller works. The CPU performance button keeps the resolution of internal operations doubled, so it's worth having it switched on unless you have a slow computer and many instances of the synth at once. But even then, remember that some hosts offer a freeze option, which might be a better choice. On the right, we have some media sign options. Data entry enables selected parameters to be controlled by external hardware. So you can click uh, on a knob or a slider and then control it with an external hardware uh, with a channel set here. Uh, channel 1 is for mod wheel, so let's see how this works. I'm clicking on input volume now with my mouse, and I'm using the mod wheel. So you see that the parameter changes. Okay. The next option is use operator A controllers for all our selected operators. If you take this, the controls of operator A will control other operators' parameters when you switch to their respective pages. The number here is for controlling the switching between operators. So once again, CC1 is for mode wheel. Now I've chosen operator A and see how it works. I'm using the mode wheel right now. Okay. Oh, I haven't ticked this actually, so uh, it's ticked now. And you see that the operators change when I'm using the mod wheel. The next option is send controllers uh, when changed. This is uh, when you're using a device which allows for incremental control. So we can tick this box to avoid jumps of values when using your knobs or sliders. Uh, the last option in media assign menu uh, is use free CCs for radio and it allows you to use three separate MIDI controllers to adjust the operator's radio.
The lowest option here is connected with MIDI Learn. So uh, if this is ticked, the MIDI Learn option will switch off after assignment. For example, this is the button for MIDI Learn, so I'm turning this one on. I'm clicking on input volume and I'm using a the knob on my controller uh, to change the value. You see that the CC is 73 for the input value now and uh, it just switched off so this is assigned uh, and if I, ha if I want to assign something more here I need to uh, click this button once again and this would be just different if this would be not ticked so once again I'm clicking on learn function I'm using uh, the knob on my keyboard, so this is 73. But you see that I I used the knob and uh, the assignment is still working. So when I use another knob, you see that the assignment changed to CC19. So this needs to be turned off manually just now. Okay. Uh, in the option menu we have also some database options. You can set a default author for the sounds that you'll be making here. You can also add a folder containing sounds to the database or just delete one. You can also rebuild your database here. So if you've added some sounds to your folders or some sounds have disappeared from your folders, you can use this function and the synth will actualize all the sounds to their current state. You have also database hit count display here, so there are three options here uh, to be chosen. I have now chosen show count as number, so when we go to the browser, you see the numbers of the sounds in each category. When I click the sound, the synth category, you see respective numbers in each category, according to your choice. Uh, okay, next uh, you see the name of the chosen sound here. With these you can change the sound um, you're using right now. Here you can turn the ARP arpeggiator on and off. Uh, this button, Edit All, is for the Morph Square, and we'll take a look at the Morph Square in a separate video. When you click this, uh, all the functionalities uh, that apply to the Morph Square are assigned to all of the squares. You have the Polyphony setting here. When you click on it and you turn the mouse down or up, you can change the Polyphony setting. And here you have the CPU usage uh, in, percent, in percent value. Here is also a preview of the harmonic content of the sound and uh, the volume. So when I play C note, you see the volume here. And in some situations uh, in which your speakers might be endangered because the sound is too loud, okay, you can click the exclamation mark here and the sound just stops. So let's go lower now. You've already seen the browser. Uh, you can choose and browse through your sounds here. Uh, there are also categories which can help you. Uh, you have attributes that are assigned to each sound here, so you can change them, including some comments. This is a master view. There is a lot of important options here uh, which are valid while uh, creating a sound. This is the effects section uh, with certain effects that you can use. This is the arpeggiator. Of course, we'll take a look at each of these parts in a separate video. This is the easy view and the morph square. The easy view lets, as its name say, assign some parameters uh, in an easier way than in a different sections of the synth. But these are actually the same parameters that can be found in these sections. And this is the morph square for morphing between different 
sounds and we've got an expert view. The expert view actually consists of some more views. This is the operator's view, so you see all the operators here and their basic functions as well as the, as the FM matrix, which shows actually the basic thing that FM8 synthesis is all about, allowing for a certain kind of interaction between operators. Um, next we have the envelope uh, view here. So all the envelopes can be modified here for all the operators as well as for the filters and for the pitch. This is the modulation matrix, so all the modulation things can be assigned here. Um, there are also two LFOs here. This is the uh, key scaling view. Um, you can scale each operator separately. And uh, there is a microtuning setting here. This view is for spectrum analysis, so it shows the harmonic content of your of your sound. So, as we have seen, this is previewed also at the top. Um, and this is the final waveform of your sound. As we have a sine wave now, it just looks like a sine wave. There are also views for single operators with respective functions. So this is a view for operator A uh, with all the functions that apply to this operator. Uh, you also have uh, the envelope setting here, the modification settings, the panning, velocity. Um, the same for all other operators. There is also the operator X, which is responsible for noise and saturation, and the filter. Um, the lowest one is the pitch view. Uh, it has some options that we have seen also in the master view, like the portamento and the analog knob. We have seen the portamento here, and this is the analog setting. The last thing to see here is uh, the pitch and mod wheel. Uh, let's check this now. I'm playing the C note and I'm using the pitch wheel on my keyboard so you see that it moves also on the screen. And the same for the mod wheel. As you might have noticed, uh, when I played the sound it was also visible on the keyboard. So, um, that's it for now and see you in the next video.